We're going to be doing this with the transfer rip and I have created a couple of pieces of artwork. My mom's favorite is Johnny Mathis. Um, so I've made two pieces of artwork. I'm doing this using the laser dark media even though I'm putting it onto a white shirt because I want to have the, uh, the ability to do decorating with hot stamping foil and I also want the ability to have a, uh, a high uh, durability with it. So this is going to be just printed as black um, using the standard screening from the printer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print two copies of this. And I've already configured my iColor 600 printer so that it's expecting tabloid size trans, uh, transparency media. So I don't have to, um, uh, you know, I don't have to wait and press the online button between each print. So I can click the print. So I am, uh, I'm running this as a one-man band today. So appreciate you bearing with me on it. Uh, actually, while that one is uh, printing, I'm going to go back here and um, select the second one, which is the, the Johnny Mathis print itself. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about what you can do with the transfer rip. So this is an image that, as you can see, it has a full scale of white in the background. So there's, you know, this would, if this printed normally, it would print this full scale of white, as you see here. And I don't need all of this white. In fact, I don't want this white because I'm putting this onto a white shirt. But as you see in these tints and various areas uh, within the, the design, since I am using the laser dark media, I do need the white toner to fill in and give the, the laser dark media something to, uh, to, to bond with. And so I do need to have, in fact, I could even go a little bit higher in the amount of coverage just to make sure that we've got, you know, a full amount of white filling in in all of the areas. So now in order to not process or to print all of that full on white, I'm going to use screening configured as a mask for bright media. So this Again, the way the dark media works is this pulls out the black in a design and replaces it with the black that's in the shirt. This option pulls out the white that's in the design and replaces it with the white that's in the shirt. Our shadow tolerance value, um, something in the neighborhood of 170, 180, should give us a good amount of white removal so that we have very little of the full area of white, but we still have the tints of white in the areas where we're looking for it. I'm doing a, uh, a 28 uh, LPI mask with the Euclidean round dot. This will give us enough masking to give it a nice soft feel, while at the same time there'll be plenty of detail in the final design. 5250 is the recommended angle when using the Euclidean dot. And again, I'm going to go ahead and print two copies of this as well. Again, I'm using the printer default. Um, my printer, I, I find that with offsetting this, a minus four kind of shifts things over a little bit so that I, uh, things will be more centered in the sheet. And so we will tell that to print. So these are the first two prints that uh, just came out. So what I want to do with these is uh, press them. I set one aside for the moment. And to press these, and I want to make sure that my pressure is where I want it to be. That feels pretty good. And I want to line these up so that I've got a 
the adhesive covering everywhere that I need it. I'll cover it with a couple of sheets of uh, parchment paper. And I'm pressing this for two minutes. And if you, if you look at this, you can see that the, the white areas are virtually removed from everywhere except just where I need it in these tints of colors. Let's go back. And this is a hot peel. Johnny picture. Press that. And then we'll trim these. I actually going to trim the corners on these. around the edges like so when using um, older presses a lot of people you know talking about hot peeling and how it works I'm finding that if you're having any issues if you simply stop and about halfway through and turn your piece that um, it does a it, it does a great deal of, of uh, help in some of these you know pressing issues these are things that I, I you know I want to look forward to uh, talking to you about uh, as we um, go through more and more of these events you know what are some of the issues that people are having how can we help you to get through with those come up with ideas about creative ways of using this technology so that you can create high value garments that you know will bring a bigger return than some of the traditional stuff that might you might see on the market these days all right so we have a hot peel steady Perfect. Okay. And so now we trim these. It's a little bit less of an issue for white garments because the adhesive isn't really going to show up. Uh, certainly these uh, excess lines around the edges on black shirts really show up big time. Uh, but. Um, not quite so much so on lighter colored garments, but we'll uh, we'll trim trim it off all the way. In any case, all right. So now we're ready to start making our garment itself. So another reason um, that I 
Another reason that I, uh, I like using the laser dark media for, uh, for lighter garments, you know, I think this is a cotton, I'm not exactly sure, but a lot of times some of these fabrics, when you're using it with the, uh, with the laser light or the laser transparent, you can get some scorching because of the higher temperature. Um, with the laser dark, I can apply this all the way down below, you know, around 225 degrees if need be. So it gives me the ability to work with, you know, with more um, uh, uh, delicate types of uh, fabrics. So. All right, we'll put this in here. And I'm going to press it just to get it nice and flat. All right. That looks good. So the first thing that we want to put down is the, um, is the hot stamping foil. Now I tend to kind of, when I'm doing a double piece like this, you know, I tend to sort of like to use both of them together so I can get a better idea of, of uh, you know, where this, how the centering works and things like that. So we'll put this one on here. And this is going to be our reference point now. I cover this with some parchment and now what I'm going to do with this since I'm going to use this with hot stamping foil I'm only going to use you know fairly slight pressure for just a few seconds because all I want to do is basically just tack this sheet to the shirt so I can then come back and apply my hot stamping foil to it. Uh, a cold peel process here. Um, I even have a uh, thing here that I use. It's a guardrail, aluminum guardrail. Kind of just rub it over and it will pull the heat out pretty quickly. And we will grab a corner here and just start rolling it away. So we recommend, you know, that you shear it off with a roll like this so that you really get a nice, clean removal. All right. So now, this, uh, this adds our stars, and I'm actually going to show you in a few minutes um, how I made these. Um, won't go too much into that because uh, we'll save that for another time. All right. Now, one of the other things, you may have been wondering, what is this stuff? Well, this, <laughs> this is my little magic pixie dust, and uh, what I want to do with this is... Um, I just want to get just a little bit more of a kind of a bling effect with this, just so it doesn't so look so squared off. So these are, this is uh, called bone ash, and what it does is it, um, it'll bond with the hot stamping foils. And for this example, I'm going to be doing gold. I have two, two pieces of it here so that I can cover everything well. Let's see. Let me, let me put this one on top here like that. That one on the bottom. And then we'll cover this again with a couple of sheets of parchment. And now I want to put my, my full-on pressure for about 20 seconds or so. We're, he we're heating up that adhesive. We're letting it melt. Uh, and the, 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 the effect of the coating on this transparency sheet 
with the adhesive creates the the bond the bond that uh, sticks with the hot stamping foils and again this is also a uh, a cold peel All right. so again my little cooling plate comes in handy Let's see what this looks like. All right, bada boom, bada bling. All right, nice, nice bit of bling there. All right, so now we got to. Now we got to add Johnny to the scene. And we bring it back in. And we can position Johnny. So we can, the nice thing about this media being transparent like this, it makes it easy for me to see, you know, how, how the, where the positioning is, when do I have everything in position. Again, we'll cover this with a couple of pieces of parchment. And we are pressing it again for another 20, 30 seconds to, uh, um, Heat up the adhesive, press it back into the garment so that we get a nice bond with the garment. Again, you know, I could do this kind of design without the bling, of course, uh, using the laser transparent or the laser light media. But, you know, when you're doing a toner bond onto the shirt, you don't get the full durability that you get with the laser dark adhesive and you um, you don't get the ability of doing the the real rasterization all right so another cold peel all right so let's uh, pull off the heat with a little And again, we want to do a nice tight roll to shear the design away from the garment, the sheet, not the design, the, sh the transfer sheet. All right, that already looks super nice. So now let's... Uh, Put it back in here. So it has, as you can see, probably a really high gloss finish to it. And, uh, you know, it's also, you know, still sitting up high on the shirt. It's not really pressed deep into the shirt yet. So we want to put it back in and cover it with a couple of sheets of parchment. And give it one more good press. Actually, this time we want to maybe add a little bit more pressure to it. So that we're really pressing it into the garment. So to give it the, the maximum durability. And this is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for this nice soft feel that I get from the rasterization. I'm looking for the improved durability that I get from the rasterization and that I get from using the laser dark adhesive. So, uh, you know, even though it's called laser dark, it's certainly usable for, for any type of, uh, of garment. 
Alright. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let it kind of cool off just a bit so I can touch it. I don't know if you can see that from up above. Let me uh, show it to you right over here. What do you think? Think mom will like this? <laughs> it's a one of a kind, that's for sure. All right, well, for anybody who's, uh, who's still uh, with us, let me take a moment and kind of show you how I did the, uh, the artwork on this. Here is uh, Illustrator. And um, so what I did was, uh, let me go back and turn off this uh, view outline. So I, I, I got a piece of art that had all of these stars and everything that you see in the background. And then I, uh, I, I, placed, uh, I placed over that the the image, the PNG image of uh, Johnny, and I used that to create this outline mask. So I just drew this outline mask that you see highlighted here, and then together uh, these two were used to create the clipping mask. So I selected the outline, I selected all of the stars, and I went into clipping mask and made a clipping mask from that. And so that masked out all of these stars that were, that I didn't want showing in behind the head. Then uh, the next thing that I did was I, uh, I did a, a version of just his signature and I, you know, copied it out of the PNG did some artwork with it to, to bring it up, and then I uh, brought it into Illustrator and I used it to create as, a, uh, as an outline, so it's a vector path now. And then I positioned the vector path so that it fell just where I wanted it to be and added, uh, added a little stroke to it so that it's a, a little bit larger than the actual outline in the design itself so that I wouldn't have trouble with the registration on this. And then I went back and I turned off the, uh, the image layer and just saved this as a PDF file. And so now this, both of those were then brought into the RIP. Concludes this live event. Um, again, I hope this uh, I hope this worked out well. It's my first time, so you know, <laughs> give me a break a little bit. Uh, I uh, I look forward to the opportunity of of doing a lot more of these. And um, again, you know, I would really appreciate it if you would, you know, hit the like button, put your comments in, let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, I am Art Affirm on uh, on Facebook. Uh, my email is uh, david at luciddream.com. Uh, I actually created a page that I'm sort of working with. Uh, I call it Hot Deco Man. <laughs> Notice the hot, all right? So Hot Deco Man, you can search for that and, um, you know, come join me for future events. Again, please send me your thoughts and ideas. Uh, I'm going to be putting together a bunch of these, uh, assuming anybody actually likes it. So, till then, hey, keep decorating. <laughs>